What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Pixel OS beta and this is the Android 14 build of the Pixel OS 12th November 2023 build if you're noticing from here and here are some notes about this ROM. Well, you need to use this Orange Fox Recovery 11.1.6 or the latest recovery and this particular recovery if you just click here, so you just click on the Orange Fox Recovery. Yes, I was using the Qt RP recovery earlier, but right now I have switched to this particular recovery. And to download this, let me actually show you. You just need to scroll on this GitHub page and just download the first one, which actually says Erops or something in the name. So this is the first one. So this is the one I have used. You just flash it as a zip file with your existing developer recovery. It will be flashed properly and it will boot automatically to the orange box recovery. And once it boots, you just format data and flash this particular ROM as any other ROM. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can definitely check out the flashing guides from the description. The method is pretty similar. Just use this particular recovery as mentioned. And this ROM also has the MIUI camera included, so that's just awesome. But it has some bugs in the Indian Redmi Note 10 Pro units. I'll show you those. But first things first, let me show you the Android version section. This is how it looks like. We have the Android version is 14. And if you just keep tapping on it, you will get the Android 14's logo. And if you keep holding on this, you will get the Android 14's Easter egg. Let me actually show you. So yeah, this is the Easter egg of Android 14. And you can play this game if you want to. Let me just go back from here. And we have the latest November 1st, 2023 security patch. So that's just awesome. And you can see the baseband number and the stock kernel is the 4.14 Bantam kernel present over here. And this is the build number. Of course, it shows Pixel OS for Suite Android 14 and the build date 12th November 2023. Now, in the system settings, we have the language, keyboard, gesture, and the date and stuff in the backup settings. And we also have the thermal profiles, but of course, there are no system updated. And from this thermal profile, you can change it to the benchmark and stuff like that. And there are more options like the browser, camera, dialer, gaming, streaming, and the navigation and the video modes. Now, let me show you the gesture settings. In here, we have the quickly open camera and stuff, and you can enable it if you want. We have the navigation mode right here. If you go into the settings of it, we have the swipe to invoke assistant. That is actually working fine, and it takes a little bit time, but yeah, as you can see, it is directing my voice, and I'm connected to this Bluetooth headset. It is connected perfectly fine, and it is showing up the Bluetooth battery status in case you are wondering. And here we have the left edge and right edge customizations. Then we also get the hide gesture bar option in case you want to hide the spell bar, you definitely can. Now let me go back. We have the three button navigation right here. And in the settings of it, we have the hold for assistant, invert navigation layout. That's pretty much everything we get. And we have the one handed mode as well. And it is actually working fine. We have the press and hold power button action. We have the power menu and the digital assistant. Then we also have the enable advanced restart. So that's just awesome. Let me actually show you the power menu. This is how it looks like. Right now with the advanced restart, I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. And let me just go back. We have the swipe to take screenshot. That is working. We have the share, edit and the delete option. Then we have the playback control, the quick torch and the prevent ringing. Yes, I have tested quick torch. It is working. Let me actually show you quickly. I'll just hold the power button. And as you can see, the quick torch is working perfectly fine. And the fingerprint scanner also works perfectly fine. I'll show you the speed and stuff in details later on. Now let's talk about the home screen. Well, this is how it looks like. Nothing special. It's just a pixel launcher. Let me actually show you the home screen settings. These are the settings that you will get. There is the suggestion disabling option. Although there is no double tap to sleep, of course, as this is a stock pixel launcher. And to the left of the home screen, we have the Google's discover page and swiping on it, it's working perfectly fine in 120 Hertz. And over here, the app drawer and stuff appears like this and everything is very, very smooth. No problems whatsoever in this ROM. Swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel, no issues. And this is how the quick setting panel actually looks like. And you can change the pages of the toggles and you can edit and add even more toggles if you want to. Yes, there is the like Wi-Fi and mobile data toggle separately. Also, you do get the internet toggle as well. If you don't like that, you can just disable that and use these Wi-Fi and mobile data toggle. Let me actually show you which toggles I have added. I have the Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, and the flashlight and stuff. Everything is working. The Google Home controls, the battery saver, the screen recorder is there. There is only the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time feature and show touches on the screen. There is no HEVC kind of modes yet. We have the 100 mode, the data saver, night light, the dark theme and the hotspot heads up and the always on display. You can toggle it on or off. Nearby share auto rotate and we have the screencast, the airplane mode, alarm and the do not disturb and even the extra dim feature is there. And the battery widget is also working perfectly fine, but sometimes it doesn't show the Bluetooth battery. That's how it is. As you can see right now, it only shows the phone's battery, even though I'm connected to a Bluetooth device, but it does show the Bluetooth battery on this particular section on the launcher. Now, one really cool thing about this particular ROM is that while I was setting up the ROM, 
for the first time, it was really awesome to see that it supports the wireless kind of restoring of the Google App Data Backup from a different phone. And then I just used my Poco A5 to actually restore the App Data Backup. Wirelessly, it worked perfectly fine. I just had to scan a QR code from this particular Redmi Note 10 Pro to the Poco A5, it showed a pop-up. Then I was able to set up the ROM on the Redmi Note 10 Pro wirelessly and all my App Data and stuff were restored on this particular ROM perfectly fine. So that was really nice to see that the Pixel kind of wireless backup and restore is working perfectly fine on this particular Pixel OS. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Well, we are actually getting the MIUI camera. That's just awesome. The wide angle lens or ultra wide angle lens and the main sensor and of course the 2x zooming option is also working. Front camera and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. No problems. And there is the portrait mode and stuff. They are working fine. Let's just to quickly take a picture. So I just quickly took a picture and in the night mode and stuff, as you can see, everything is working. No problems. Even the 61 megapixel mode is there. And there is also the normal video settings and in here, we have the 1080p 60fps and the 4k 30fps option and the 1080p 30fps all those things for some reason the 1080p 60fps does not work over here if you just click on that at least in the indian redmi note 10 pro units it will just stop the camera or it will give you some kind of glitch but yeah the super macro lens let me actually show you with the 1080p 30fps it is actually working let me have a close subject and here as you can see it is actually working perfectly fine no problem super macro lens is working there is a documents mode it also works perfectly there is the pro mode and if you just swipe up there is the short video then the panorama vlog slow motion time lapse ai watermark long exposure dual video and the clone mode so all these modes will be working but in the video settings let me show you the bug right now i'm switched to the rear camera the main sensor and here if i just click on 4k 30 ps yes it will work as you can see it's still working i can shoot a video if i want now, if I switch to the 1080p 60fps mode, here, as you can see, it has stopped. There was a glitch right now. Okay, the normal photo mode and stuff are still working, but in the video mode, as you can see, right now, it has also stopped. So yeah, this is a bug, but if I switch to 1080p 30fps, okay, right now, it is working perfectly fine. Earlier, I had to actually clear the data of the camera to actually fix this particular 1080p 60fps bug. But yeah, that bug is still there. But otherwise, for normal 30 FPS videos, it should be working perfectly fine. No issues. Now, with Android 14, let me actually talk about the battery settings. Yes, this is very clean. It doesn't show much info. It has the battery percentage right there. And we have the battery usage and the battery percentage just right there. You can toggle it on or off for the status bar. But let me talk about one thing. In Android 14, the battery life, if you use battery saver, it's just insane. Now, as I'm talking about it, let me actually show you the battery life that I have got with the Acro battery app. Here, my estimated screen on time, you can see this is about seven plus hours of screen on time or seven and a half hours of screen on time estimated. And the screen off is about seven days. That's about a week. That's too much. And the combined use is about like two days worth of usage. So pretty much amazing battery life that I have been getting. And even you can get full day of battery life with no issues. But if you want to even extend your battery life, just enable your battery saver. And with that, the battery life will be two days worth of usage, no problems whatsoever. Even with my three years old battery health, let me actually show you here with the Aqua battery estimate, my battery health shows as 79%. Even with this 80% below 80% level battery, I'm getting two days worth of usage with the battery saver. That's just insane. Yes, I don't have a SIM card in the device, but my usage is pretty heavy. And in case you are wondering about the fast charging, yes, that too is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about that. Now, of course, in the wallpaper and styles, you will get the lock screen clocks. And these are the lock screen clocks, which are there. There are, of course, Android 14's plethora of clocks. I'll show you these, but in the home screen settings, we also have the wallpaper changing option. There is a minerals, AI wallpapers, and all other wallpapers, which are like present over here, you can notice. I have been using a fresh walls wallpaper, which looks like this, looks pretty dope to me at least. We have the themed icons and the app grid is there, and this is just up to five by five. In the security settings, this is how it looks like the Android 14's new security settings. Looks pretty beautiful. We have the device unlock right here. We don't have much like face unlock and stuff is not yet there. And in the settings of it, we do not have the scramble pin layout and stuff yet, but that's how it is. And we have the pixel imprint that's for the fingerprint scanner. I have already added two fingerprints, but in the more settings, there is no app lock yet. That's pretty fine, I would say, because again, it's a beta early build. One of the bummers of this room is there is no double tap to sleep even on the status bar. That's just weird. Like I have to use the power button if I want to lock the device every time. Well, on a custom ROM, that's just not nice. I hope that feature will be added in the future update. But here, let me show you the pickup gesture. I'll just lock the device and put the device on the desk. And right now, if I just pick this up on my hand, as you can see, the always on display appears like this. So the pickup gesture is actually working and the double tap to wake. 
well from here double dot wake is not working for some reason let's just click our button and as you can see in the lock screen the clock looks like this now if i enable the always on display and with that of course the always on display will be working the double tap to wake for some reason is not working most of the time but yeah right now it worked let's try double tap to sleep yeah double tap to sleep is not working simply but double tap to wake sometimes works sometimes doesn't as you can see right now it worked again so it takes a little bit of time to actually get the double tap to wake working in the always on display but yeah it does work if you don't have always on display turned on let me actually show you if i don't have always on display turned on now if i double tap yes right now the double tap to wake is working properly no issues so even with always on display let me actually show you in the like always on display this is how it looks again with this particular clock and if i just tap on the fingerprint scanner it just unlocks so fingerprint scanner it's just very fast no issues and the animations are very smooth it's just like a pixel device you can say just notice how smooth the animations are it's just buttery smooth animation looks so beautiful and even from the lock screen as you can see this is how it looks like while you unlock from the lock screen as there are no face unlock i cannot really show you that but yeah overall the animations everywhere in this particular device is just awesome now let's talk about the basic things yes safety net passes right out of the box so no problems with backing apps over here the drm info stays as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p also the ir blaster works perfectly fine here no issues with that now one of the most amazing features are here that is the google photos and videos unlimited backup with google photos app so that's just awesome now let's open test your website to get you an idea if the 120 hertz is actually working or not so here if you're noticing it's showing 113 fps yes the redmi note 10 pro does not have a super powerful cpu so it cannot actually reach the 120 fps over here i guess if i just zoom it in here hopefully it will reach more so it's still it's showing 100 100 plus fps so pretty much it's not at least stuck at 80 fps so it's going about 100 plus so yeah 120 hertz it's actually working fine no problems while like even zooming and stuff like that in websites it's working and even in x let me actually show you here if i just scroll just notice how smoothly it scrolls it's just very smooth experience overall in x and stuff and even if i open play store everywhere it's just perfectly working so no problems whatsoever with this particular rom's performance while daily driving and here are the android 20 geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall ui performance it's just very smooth experience and even in the recent panel as you can see this is how it looks like in case you want to go into the split top mode or split screen mode this is how it works and you can just switch the windows just like this just notice the animations it's just very smooth in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have the media call ring etc volume controls if we just scroll down more we have the vibration and haptics you can customize it the touch feedback and stuff in case you want to right now it's giving me haptic feedback as i just turned it up a little bit and here if i just scroll down we have the me sound enhancer that's just insane to see and this was not even there on the early builds of the poco a5's evolution x let me actually go back and right now we also have the clear speaker option and the haptic feedback you can actually change the intensity of it from right here too then we have the tap and click sound then the always show icon when in vibrate mode in the dial pad tone screen locking sound etc so all these features you can get from right here you can turn them on or off and here let me show you the volume panel looks like this and right now we cannot really expand the volume panel even when you are connected to bluetooth device but there is the notification volume as you can see it appears like this and playing and pausing music from the lock screen looks like this and again you can change the sound output device from right here now some features are missing i have to say of android 14 over here in this rom like in the app section you will see there is the default apps assistant then the screen time and stuff like that but on the right hand i have the poco a5 and here i'm running evolution access android 14 version the latest build and right here you will see there is a new option which shows cloned apps this cloned apps feature particularly is a dual apps kind of feature which you get in miui or stuff like that and you can just create a separate like account for each app with this particular feature so in case you want to use two whatsapp accounts on the same phone you can do that with this particular feature so this is inbuilt in poco a5's android 14 but in the like redmi note 10 pro this feature is not yet added in the pixel os no i'm not complaining i'm just saying that these particular features are not here this is still a beta build very early build of pixel os so these features will be added in the future updates hopefully i'm just saying that this feature is not there in the app section in the display settings this is how it looks we have the brightness level adaptive brightness and in the lock screen we have the use device controls the privacy kind of controls and the ambient display is also there there is a pickup i have enabled that and in the screen time we have up to 30 minutes and the screen attention is also there that's really good to see we have the dark theme we have the pitch black kind of option or the use black theme option this works 
and we also have the display size and text and in here you can customize the font size the display size etc and there is the bold text option as well in case you want to use like bolder text all over the UI you can and this is how it looks like with that let's just disable that for the time being and we also have the icon manager from here you can enable the icons of the headset blue etc right here let me just go back we have the night light and you can change the intensity of this and you can schedule it if you want then we have the colors you can change it to boosted saturated and natural we also have the smooth display then we have the force peak refresh it and we have the auto red screen screen saver and the double tap to wake so hopefully i have covered most of the parts about this particular pixel OS. let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, share this video with your friends. If you want to know about the latest Pixel OS on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and how it's running, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.